Mystery Writers. Today I want to talk about the supporting role your suspects have in your mystery. Your detective, the victim, and the villain are like the skeleton of your story. But the suspects provide the meat. All the story that comes in the middle of the second and the third acts of your four-act mystery. First, I want to thank my Patreon supporters who support this video series and my mystery writing. And um, if you'd like to join, there's a link in the description below where I have... Um, special gifts and articles and videos for my patrons. All right, so what is it about the suspects and why is it so important? Um, it, what is their essential role in, in the story? They essentially contribute to the vitality of your story and uh, they create tension, and they keep readers on the edge of their seats because they want to watch the detective unearth the truth behind each character's actions and motivations. And without this element, a mystery novel can actually fall flat. And that's the last thing we want to have happen we want to avoid a sagging middle, and the middle is the biggest part of your book. So your suspects really support you as the writer in creating an intricate and intriguing story for your mystery readers. Um, And there are various types of suspects in your story. Uh, the obvious culprit is one. That is a, a suspect with a clear motive, a strong connection to the victim, a history of conflicts with the victim, disagreements, and actions that create doubt about their veracity in the reader's mind. And this is, uh, while being an obvious culprit, is often the big red herring in your story because with all these elements that point toward this person is probably the culprit, they aren't, right? Um, and then there's the innocent disguise and that is a seemingly innocent character with a hidden motive. And oftentimes it takes a good deal of work on the, your detective's part to uncover that hidden motive. And this type of suspect camouflages their true intentions with a likable persona and often with a dramatic reveal that exposes a secret past or a hidden agenda. And once again, this may or may not be the villain, but you can certainly use this aspect for one of your suspects because this character challenges the reader to think beyond appearances and question everyone's motivation. So you're raising more questions for your reader, which is always a good thing because the more readers question what's going on, the more eager they are to keep reading to find out what is the real story behind this story, right? And there's also the accomplice in, in the shadows, a character who works alongside the villain and this suspect lurks beneath the radar of both your detective and the reader. And one of the things that can happen with this suspect is, is that, especially if you pair them with the innocent, the seemingly innocent 
suspect, your detective and your reader are just going to have no clue that this person actually is working behind the scenes. So this is a great suspect to have to develop in the third act of your mystery where you are still keeping that middle from sagging and you want to add more intrigue and all of a sudden this character who just seemed almost off stage suddenly displays characteristic malevolent characteristics so you have a lot to play with with those um and these are just some examples of suspect archetypes and of course depending on your story um, you can play around with how you create these suspects and how you reveal that each one of your suspects is actually not the villain and of course one of your suspects is going to be the villain and we've talked a lot about hiding the villain until the end but the major way is that among all these suspects one of them is the villain so your detective's big job is to sort through all those different suspects to discover who is the real villain villain um so let's talk about what you can do to create those suspects that are intriguing for your reader that they they really get they may hate the suspect they may like the suspect they may, you know they may like that suspect so, so much that they're like oh i really hope this isn't the one cuz i i really like him or her. Um, because if you do a good job, your readers form emotional attachments to the various suspects. Um, and I think it's very important to create a balanced roster of the suspects so that each one of them is individual, individual in their motivations, individual in their past history with the victim, and individual in the ways that they could possibly have been the one. All right, so, so if you have two suspects who are essentially the same, with the same motivations, what that does is confuse your reader because there, it's going to be hard for your reader to separate those two suspects in their mind. So... The balance is essential to keeping each suspect very individual in your story and keeping your reader guessing because they are so different from the other suspects. So, you know, it's like, what if? Whoa, if they did that, then maybe they're the one. And, oh, I didn't know that he had an affair with his sister or whatever it is, you know. Um so you you want to keep a balance and make sure that each one of your suspects is three-dimensional and very different in their motivations from the other suspects. And that goes along with having maybe four to eight suspects in your story, which makes it easier for you as the writer to make each suspect totally unique within your story. Um, and of course, as your detective starts discovering more and more about the suspects, each one has a different background, a different backstory, and a different relationship to the victim. And you want to know what those relationships with the victim were, both the ones that were apparent and the hidden relationships. Because this is what gives you lots to work with in the second and third acts as your detective meets the suspects and starts thinking about them and goes back to interview them again because they discover new information about them or they discover that, that they perhaps misinterpreted what a suspect said and want to go back and verify uh, what the suspect said and make sure that that's really what they meant. 
So you have a lot to play with and your suspects are the tools you have as a mystery writer to keep building the questions and keep your reader on the edge of their seat um, because you want to keep your reader guessing that's it and the main and one of the main jobs of your suspects each of your suspects each in a different way is to misdirect to point your sleuth and the reader in a direction that goes away from solving the puzzle instead of toward solving the puzzle and that's why you're knowing these each suspect as a character and knowing their background is going to help you build the mystery of your mystery. Um, and it also helps you when you want to create twists, when you know enough about the characters and those suspects to bring up some other aspect of that character that hasn't been revealed before. Okay, I think... I think that's pretty much what I wanted to say today. Um, it's just that think of your suspects as as the meat, what fleshes out your story, so that the more you know about each suspect and the more you work with their traits and their quirks, the more you have to play with when you're creating the mystery and making it hard for your detective to actually uncover the truth. Uh, all right. I mean, I don't know. Venturing into mystery writing is a lot of fun. And I think a lot of fun of the fun of it is creating the mystery for your reader. So it's more than just the essential crime and the villain. It's all the suspects and keeping your reader engaged and guessing and wondering what's going to happen next. Wait, I thought he said before that. So you you want to just keep your reader guessing. And that is the major, major job of every suspect character in your story. Okay, thank you. And if you have any questions, be sure to leave them in the comments. Happy to answer questions. And once again, I want to thank Audible for being a sponsor of Write a Killer Mystery. And there's a link in the description below to a 30-day free trial if you haven't used Audible before. And it's, it's just really a lot of fun. Right now I am listening to, to a story on Audible unnecessary evil by Ajir Merkaji and um it's 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 really fun it's india in the 20s and an amazing cast of characters and lots and lots of suspects who all have very very different motivations uh, so if you haven't used audible before I encourage you to give it a try and see what comes up. Uh, my, I was talking with my sister and she said, well, I don't drive as much as I used to, so I don't listen to audiobooks as much. And I said, oh, wow, I listen to audiobooks when I'm um, out in the garden weeding. I listen to audiobooks when I'm essentially doing chores like washing the dishes or sweeping or mopping or any of those things that you do around the house. Um, as as well as when I'm driving, I do listen when I'm driving. Um, and I'm sure you'll find some ways to enjoy audiobooks in your life. All right, thank you once again. Have fun creating your suspects. It's uh, part of the fun of being a mystery writer. And I will see you again next week. Mm -hmm.